the recording. And so let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, kind God, we thank you, Lord. God, in these days, oh God, with the hustle and bustle, sometimes God is just uh, finding time to hear your word is uh, not always easy. God, but we, we thank you that we're able to go forth right now. God, sometimes we forget the spiritual side of life in pursuit of the material things in this world. But God, we thank you tonight for helping all of us to find the time to gather here tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for reminding each of us that we must devote ourselves to loving you and knowing you more. God, we thank you. As we begin our study tonight, God, I ask you to guide our thoughts and minds so that we may grow closer to you, God closer and closer. God, we pray that our Bible study session and every part of our lives, God, will glorify your name. God and others can see the good works. We thank you again. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. All right. Our lesson tonight in this Champion Living series overcoming feelings of futility, uh, uselessness, feeling like we are just useless. Uh, we've been talking about champion living and overcoming low self-esteem, overcoming loneliness in the midst of uh, the COVID. Uh, and, and last week we talked about overcoming personal and spiritual stagnation. And tonight I want to talk about feelings of inadequacy, uh, insignificance, uh, futility, uselessness. Uh, and so I want to find out what makes you happy and what gives you, what brings you joy. And I think one of the hardest things to do in life is to live with joy in the midst of trials and uh, challenges. Uh, so follow scripture tonight, uh, let me just say that uh, we do have one more uh, next week in this series, and I'm praying that uh, you will be here for that last one uh, next week. Our scripture on your handout, if you don't have the handout or if you can get the New Living Translation, is coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon in this uh, particular verses spoke for many people. He was speaking for many people of his generation and our own when he wrote these verses, when he wrote Ecclesiastes. And if I can get someone to start off um, reading the lesson scripture. Oh my goodness. Okay, forget the you, it's I scripture, okay? On your handout. So if you can read those verses for us, please. Everything is meaningless. Am I in the right spot? Yes. <laughs> okay. I have on a little different glasses, but I'm going to get through this. Everything okay. is meaningless, says the teacher. Completely meaningless. What do people get for all their hard work under the sun? Generations come and generations go. But the earth never changes. The sun rises and the sun sets. Then hurries around, oh gosh, hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and then turns north. Around and around it goes, blowing in circles. Rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. The water <clears throat> returns again to the rivers and flows out again to the sea. Everything is is that worrisome? <laughs> Wearisome. I'm oh, sorry, beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. Mm. Please, yes. Thank you so much. Those are the verses for tonight. Let us hear what God has to say about this matter. Uh, uh, before we go into our lesson. I have a question and I want everyone now to be ready to give me your answer. Give me something. Thinking about our lesson. Have you ever felt 
like a loser. Have you ever felt like a loser, but you actually were a winner? Have you ever felt like you were a loser, but you actually, you really were a winner? Anyone? Yes, good evening, Pastor and friends. This is yes. I felt that way when I was working for Sears selling product and everybody was selling but me. And I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and I was a loser. But thanks be to God, I went in the room in there and I started praying and come mm -hmm. back and I sold everybody. Amen. So at that time, that's when I learned that you're not a loser. God is there for us at all times. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. My, my, my. And I believe during that time, I think I can remember something about that year and they celebrated you. You thought that you, 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 you didn't succeed or you didn't make it and they celebrated you at Sears. Oh my yes. goodness. Anyone else, have you ever felt like a loser, but you really were a winner anywhere in life? Yes, Pastor. This mm -hmm. minister. Minister Johnny, praise God. Mm -hmm. I felt like a loser in all my coming up when I was younger. And I didn't realize that it wasn't so much of what we had. It was what we needed mm. that carried me to, through to this point of life, wherein that I'm content with a lot of things that others aren't all because of the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. But yet still, it gave me the aspiration to try to build and go further. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thank God because had I have stayed where I was, standing still on looking at everybody around me, calling me this little poor, you know, this all kind of crazy names. Mm -hmm. And I look back and see all of my friends that I came up with that are not here don't have common sense. My, my. my. So, I can, so I can say it was only by the grace of God that he brought me here this far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Minister Johnny. Felt useless, felt like you were a loser, looking at everybody else, but look at you now. Anyone, Amen. have you ever been in that position when you ever felt like a loser, but Really, actually, you were a winner. Tell it. Pastor, this is Minister Madge. Uh -huh. um, I felt like a loser when I started MIT class. Mm. I was so afraid. Oh, and I wow. was like, Lord, I can't do this. You know, I, I felt very intimidated. Um, but God said, you got this. Mm. And I stuck it out. And after about that six week, I was like, God, you're right. I can do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dummy. I know how to read. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Wonderful. And you were a great MIT. Wonderful. All right, that question. Have you ever felt like a loser when you really were a winner? Look at Elder Vanda's chat. She says, after my last marriage failed, I felt like a complete loser. But when I look back, I know I am definitely a winner. Praise be to God. Thank you, Elder Vanda. Oh my gosh, she can't talk really tonight, but she's chatting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else before we go into the lesson that you look back over your life and you felt like you were a loser, but really you were a winner. Anyone else? We've had four tonight. We can have a fifth one if there is one. Pastor, I remember when I was working at the uh, Georgia Industries for the Blind mm -hmm. and I was making $2.05 an hour. And this was in, you know, the 70s, the 80s. It was in the 80s. And people were like, why are you working on that job? And, you you know, you're working so hard. I felt bad. I got up to 
three dollars and five cents an hour but what I, they failed to realize it was considered a sheltered workshop mm. so the most of the people there were getting ssi or social security but i wasn't getting that but i just kept working and kept working and and i was happy doing it because it got me out of the house gave me mm -hmm. something to do but the more they talked about it you know oh, you ain't making nothing even my husband at the time like what you make ain't nothing, you know, and I, 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 I thought I was, you know, happy and doing something. Little did I know that I was, I, God was paving the way for me. And the people that uh, ran uh, the factory uh, told me, said, you're, you're like a daughter to us. And we love doing what you do. Mm. And when FedEx called them to check my records and my status, they said, I would hire her any day. So wow. working at that factory netted me the job that I have at FedEx today. My, 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 my. You thought you were a loser, but you ended up, you were the winner. I was the winner. Gone. And all of them ended up still at the factory that said, I don't know why you working like that for that little bit of money, but they just didn't see the big picture. My, my, my. Thank you, Mother Mamie. Uh, uh. Uh, Minister Johnny, uh, Elder Vander, Minister D, and Minister Madge. Thank you, thank you. I want all of us to think about that because in life, that's how it is. Many times you think that you're a loser, but you're actually a winner. Thanks be to God. Let's look at our lesson tonight. From start to finish of the book of Ecclesiastes declares the utter futility and complete meaningless of life without God. That's what this book is about. Without God, life is meaningless. Whether it is referring to work or pleasure, wisdom or wealth, power or prestige, entertainment or, 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 or fertility, life or death, all is considered futile and worthless when God is excluded from the equation. My, listen to Solomon tonight. Uh, for someone, if it's not you, if it's someone you know that may be feeling like useless, they don't count. Listen to God tonight, this wisdom. It is Solomon who is credited with the uh, authorship of, of, of Ecclesiastes. God chose him to succeed his father. Uh, you know the story, he, well, some of the story. Uh, uh, he succeeded King David as Israel's anointed king. And when faced with the great responsibility of leading the nation, he humbly confessed that he was unable to do so without the help of the Lord. He realized he needed God on his side. And you know what? Life is hard. Life is hard. And everyone you know has gone through seasons of pain and uncertainty, and most will again. Most of us have gone through pain. Most of us have had uncertainty and probably will again. But I thank God for John 16, 33. Our verse is there in the introduction. I gave it to you on the first week. He says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I believe that. Even in our darkest moments, God is working to turn our mourning into dancing. We can't avoid trying, uh, 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 trying times and difficult times, but we can choose how we walk through them. And so by choosing a, a posture of hopefulness, uh, hopeful expectancy, we develop stamina. You develop that perseverance. And not only is this helpful for our own spiritual development, but it's also a testimony to others who are watching us to see if the gospel is true. People are watching us. They're watching to see how we walk through our situations. One obstacle uh, uh, to feeling useful that many people have cited is the feelings of futility or the quality or state of being futile, uselessness, like nothing you do matters. Nothing you do matters. And, and that's, that, that's what is said in our last verse there. No matter how much you hear, no, no matter how much, it, it, it doesn't matter. 
uh, uh, nothing seems to matter. But just because you feel your efforts are futile doesn't mean they are futile. Just because you may feel like you're useless, it doesn't mean that you're useless. Uh, believing those feelings and letting yourself stall or start with your efforts to help is a terrible loss. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if you re realize it, there are many people who think life is utterly pointless and meaningless because they are confusing, here it is, they are confusing success with significance. But I want you to know success is about you. Significance is about others. Solomon here discovered that at the end of his life that his long search for fulfillment through his many accomplishments were nothing more than chasing after the wind. Look at our verses, that's what it says. He said it was no more than chasing after the wind. Oh, people running after the dollar, running after fame, running after a name, running after this, and you're just chasing after the wind. Despite his great wisdom, power, fame, and fortune, his, uh, you remember the story when, when, when God gave Solomon the wisdom, he didn't ask for all of that, but God gave it to him. His search for the meaning in life proved ultimately profitless because he set out to explore life and its significance in his own human strength. A lot of people are really, really missing it, uh, uh, thinking that, yes, money can make you feel comfortable, but it is not always about the almighty dollar. Again, they're confusing success with significance. They don't feel like they're significant unless they have been successful. Wrong. Success again is about you. You can be a success based upon uh, uh, what you accomplish for yourself. And significance is about others. You cannot live a life of significance without helping others. So we need to strive to live a life of significance. Hear me, uh, uh, not success. We live, we want to live a life to strive for significance, not success. Success may come along, but it shouldn't be our first priority. Our first priority should be pouring ourselves into others. But let me tell you this, and we're going to get to this handout and hear God. When you feel inadequate, you feel powerless and unable to accomplish anything. Uh, 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 which further compounds the feeling of inadequacy. But there is something you can do. There is something you can do when you feel this way, when you feel uh, 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 less than, when you feel useless. Here it is. Meditating on scripture is a great way to dissipate a fear of inadequacy. When you feel like you don't, and stop trying to measure up to what people want you to measure up with. You hear what I'm saying? You don't have to try to measure up and live a name for nobody but God. And so therefore, uh, uh, you need to meditate on the scripture. And I gave you the address to three scriptures, three of the verses you can meditate on. One is 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And you know it very well, because when Paul asked God to remove the thorn out of his side, oh my God, he asked him three times, but this was God's answer. God said to uh, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will uh, boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions. He said, I'm content with calamities, for when I am weak, then I am strong. You may be inadequate, hear me, but God is not. You may feel it, God is not. Lean on him in those times. Allow his strength to cover your weaknesses wherever you feel weak wherever you have tried to measure up to. Then another scripture, Isaiah 54, 10. 
you're familiar with this, I believe. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. You are not alone. Regardless of what happens, God is still with you. And all of us know Philippians 4.13, you can say it, say it, say it, but I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, oh my God, he gives me the strength to do it. And though you may feel inadequate to complete the task, remember that it is God who gives you the strength. When Christ lives in you and works through you, he will accomplish the will of his heavenly father. So when we think about Solomon, Solomon set out to discover uh, the meaning of life using his own reasoning power. We get in trouble when we try to reason and, and without the leading and guidance of God. Uh, uh, Solomon discovered that when God is excluded uh, from your life, the benefits of wisdom and learning are futile. And so we have to understand that life lived with reference to God under heaven is never an ex exercise or experience of, of futility. Uh, we're going to come through the verses again. All of us, every one of us, have experienced personal spiritual failure at some level. Every one of us have experienced uh, some level of, of, of failure, uh, spiritual or personal, but some have experienced a deeper failure than others or uh, one that is not popular or accepted by our culture. So you might have been fired from your job. Anybody might have been fired from your job. Uh, you might have had a messed up marriage, uh, had kids that rebelled against your values or given into temptation and thrown your uh, Christian testimony and credibility with others. And instead of accepting that some failure is good because it leads to growth or accepting the forgiveness that God offers when we've turned away from him, we begin to wonder if it's any use at all trying to be who God wants us to be. See, these things can happen to make you feel like uh, maybe I am not worthy of being who God wants me to be. So we have to be very, very careful of that. And when you begin to feel useless and inadequate and not needed, meditate on the scriptures. And those are a few scriptures that you can meditate on. So the question tonight, what is futility? What is futility? Futility means that life itself is absurd, that the life we have is without ultimate significance, without value, or without purpose. That's what futility is. Having a life without significance, without value, without purpose. And so I've given you several uh, various dictionaries define futility in this way. Will someone read those six uh, 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 definitions for us, please? Um, the first one, the quality of having no use, no useful result, useless, lack of importance or purpose. Oh, I'm going to mutilate that word. Frivolousness. Frivolousness. Thank you. Lacking the quality or quantity required, insu insufficient for a purpose, inability of a person to deal with a situation or with life, the fact that something is good is not good, good enough to, I'm sorry, the fact that something is not good enough or too small in amount, lack of confidence that makes you feel unable to deal with the situation. Yes, those are various dictionary definitions there. And looking at the definitions presented, most of us have felt this way at one time or another. I know you have, I have but we usually get over it. 
However, there are those who find themselves living with feelings of futility day in and day out. And it is something that needs to be overcome. That's why we're going to overcome it in our lesson. In other words, a person who feels inadequate doesn't feel as if they have what it takes. That's what uh, Mother Mamie said the first thing tonight. It didn't feel like uh, she had what it takes to accomplish whatever it is that uh, they're trying to complete. What in life have, 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 have you know, you, you, you just go through that, trying to complete things and you feel like a failure. So those are six definitions of futility, of what we experience. And, and it is real, it is real. And when we think about it, you think about it and ask yourself the question, what in life have I felt inadequate about uh, that you uh, feel needs to com uh, com be completed? What is it right now? You may be going through something right now that you feel inadequate about uh, that you feel needs uh, uh, completing. So think about it. Think about that you can be in this juncture right now. So those are the definitions that we're going to have tonight for you feel it of, of futility on our handout. Then the next uh, thing we look at, what causes this emotion? What makes a person feel inadequate? What causes this emotion? And what makes a person feel inadequate? People sit in church and when uh, things are going on, they're saying, oh, I can't do that. I don't feel like I'm adequate enough to do that. I can't stand up there and do this. We're always saying what we can't do, what we can't do. But, but I want us to think about what causes this emotion? What makes you feel inadequate? You look at some people and you have your mouth sometimes hanging open like, oh, I wish I could. That's because you're looking at success versus significance. You're sitting there in the pew. You're really significant. But your mind is thinking that what you see is success. And so we have a problem with the success versus significance. And I'm going to make a guess and say, we all have feelings of inadequacy about something. But what causes that emotion? Let me tell you, usually it's an awareness uh, 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 or belief that you don't have enough of something. That's what our scripture says. We have that feeling that we just don't have enough of, of, of something. I wish I could go right to uh, the verse that says that we never feel like in, in that verse eight. Verse eight says we always unsatisfied. Uh, the eye is not satisfied with what it sees or the ear is not filled or satisfied with what it's hearing. And so it's always that feeling of not having enough of something. And, and, and what really adds to it is that this world, this world we live in, this world judges people based on standards that are always changing. Standards are always changing, but people are always judging uh, by uh, standards that are always changing. So it holds a powerful magnifying glass on all of us and judges us based on its criteria. Maybe it was about the clothes we wear being judged. Oh my goodness. Our level of education, our grades, uh, where we came from, our background. Anybody ever felt any of those areas that you're being judged by your clothes, by your level of education, by your grades, where you came from, your background? Am I talking to anybody? Anybody ever felt inadequate because of any of those categories? Any of them? Yes, Pastor, I have because that was how I was brought up on a lot of criticism from other mm -hmm. people of living in the standards that they think I should live in. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have enough of something. And, you know, this is a very easy thing to fall into. And as I look back, 
you never used to hear about black people trying to uh, commit suicide because they wanted to live. But now that we've gotten to the point that we have a little success, mm. we see things from the world side and not God's side, we lose in sight of what the word of God is trying to tell us. My God, my God, never enough, never enough. And it's not always the same things as standards are based on culture or geographic location. It can be based on affiliation or wealth. You have people that tell you if you're not affiliated with this group or this organization or or, or, or this whatever or that whatever or, or uh, 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 you're useless. It can be based on wealth. If you don't have the wealth, if you're not at the same economic uh, 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 social economic status, you're not there. They're always something trying to make us compare ourselves to each other. Always, always in the church, always trying to compare ourselves to each other. But that's the world system. That is not God's system. In the eyes of God, we are equal. Oh my God, help us God, help us Lord. Yes, yes. So we understand what causes this, this emotion. The standards of this world always changing, always holding a powerful magnifying glass on all of us and judging us according to its criteria. We are judged by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Do you think it also has something to do with when you're talking about sitting on the pews and looking at other people, do you think sometimes it could also be uh, low self-esteem, and that is because of how you were treated, you know, in in any in, in many of those situations and circumstances. So because you have that low self-esteem, that fear comes and 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 that doubt and saying I can't do it uh, because of maybe you were in a situation at one point and you thought I could, and when you tried you were kind of knocked down and pushed to the side. That low yes. self-esteem comes in there. And, and for that reason, you won't try. My God, so true. Again, according to man's criteria, mm -hmm. you won't try. And you are steadily saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. But I want you to see that image on your handout. And I want you to know when you feel that way, I want you to cut the T off, cut it off, and constantly tell yourself, I can. With God's help, I can. You know we teach the kids, I can, I can, I can. Yes, I think about our president, it's two terms. Yes, we can, not can't. Cut the T off. And when, when, when this world judge you according to their standards and criteria, even on your jobs, oh my goodness, certain levels, because you're not at this promotion or this, this level, or, or, or your office here, uh, just all kinds of things. And it messes us up based on uh, 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 different criteria of this world. I like what uh, 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 Mother Mamie and Jatanya said, also social media. We are messed up. Social media. When, when, when people, are, are, it can come from social media. When we're looking at uh, stuff out there, it messes us up. We begin to feel like, I'm not significant. Look at all the accomplishments of these people and this and that. It's not about success. It's about you being significant. Yes. So we see. Pastor. Yes. Elder. Uh -oh. Yes, dear. I, I I just feel inadequate when it comes to uh, using computers and telephones and, you know, the, that kind of electronic. I try everything. One day I think I have it, and then the next day what I'm supposed to punch and all that goes away. And I feel like sometimes I should just not even try it, but I keep trying. I have a, someone to tell me what to do, then I can't do it. Well, mm -hmm. I'll say I, I'm trying to do it. Yes. I'm going to master that. <laughs> yes. Yes. And Elder Thomas, 
I feel that way uh, also. Uh, we, we, I've had to learn so much in these 23 months, but also I feel that way about the cell phone. I tell mm -hmm. you, and it seemed like when I, I do, I do. Yeah, seem like when I've got a step with the cell phone, uh, now today, <laughs> I got messed up again. Uh, I know we text, but then after the morning service, not only did I get the text, but the voice read the text to me. I'm saying, now, where did this come? And even from <laughs> my daughters, I got a text. Uh, and then the, the, the voice was reading the text. I said, wait a minute now. So I've got to ask now, what feature was that? It's all kinds of features and amenities on these, these devices. And that oh, meant, uh, yes. With, with the cell phone today, uh, uh, but we are always learning. It, but you know what, Elder Thomas, because we don't have command of this uh, uh, Zoom and these devices and all, it does not measure our significance. Uh, it does well, not. Well, that's what I think. That's uh -huh. what I think <laughs> I'm insignificant because I, I can't do that and I can't keep up with, you know, every, well, it's about other people, just like you say. I can't, mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I can fit in and, and master in that. Yes. Not yeah. significant, but significant. We, we, we get confused with that significance and that success. And we have to yeah. constantly say, yes, it's not about, remember what I said in the beginning, success, oh my goodness, is about you. Significant mm -hmm. is about others. So we thank God for that. Let's look at what are the signs of futility. Look at the signs of Futility. Now here, uh, and, and, and I want you to go back and read the verses up at the top and read it in other translations too, uh, because that verse eight is really telling us that we're unsatisfied. We're not satisfied with anything. Uh, 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 and, and it talks about how life is brief, but we, we, we trying to accomplish and get so much stuff. And, and, and we talk about the signs Solomon applied himself to exhaust his pursuit of happiness through uh, wisdom, uh, success, wealth, uh, honor, and all those things. And he pursued the treasures of this world to the extent that he achieved them all, only to come to the same conclusion each time that life is void of meaning and purpose without God. Whatever you accomplish, when you get to the end of it, just like they won the Super Bowl the other day. And I, I got a good example in a minute uh, with the Cowboys. Uh, uh, but some of you have reached the goals you've set in life. But when you reach them, you discover that success is fleeting. And a, 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 a hollow or empty feeling takes up residence within your soul. Just think about it. Uh, you'll confuse success again with significance. And rather than focusing on the accomplishments that really mean something, like being a good dad, a good mom, or grandparents, or sticking to and, and living by the Christian ethic, uh, or good conversation with friends, you've let the success syndrome keep you reaching for just a little bit more. After that, mm -hmm. success, I got to get a little bit more. Yes, Elder Thomas. Oh, okay. that was it, Pastor. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I think about a number of years ago, after Dallas Cowboys had won the Super Bowl, Coach Tom Landry made this observation. He said, the overwhelming emotion in a few days among the players on the Dallas Cowboys football team was how empty that goal was was how empty that goal was. There must be something more. They weren't satisfied. They had won the Super Bowl. And this is what the coach was saying. And a few days later, among the players on the football team, they were saying how empty that goal was. Now they reached the goal of winning the Super Bowl. Success, 
versus significance. Let's teach this to our children. Let's look at some of the signs. I need someone to read those signs uh, on the handout, please. Read all of those signs to us. What are signs of futility? The pain seems overwhelming and unbearable. You are consumed by negative and disturbing thoughts. You cannot imagine you cannot imagine any solution to your problems other than suicide. You think everyone would be better off without you. Mm. You feel worthless. You feel very lonely, even when you have friends and family. I remember you saying something about that, Pastor. Mm -hmm. You do not understand why you are feeling or thinking this way. You feel hopeless, like there is no point in living, and you feel life has no purpose. My Lord, my God. So that was me one time. Hmm? That was me one time. Yeah. All of these things that, you, that I just read, mm -hmm. it was me one time mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. And some of the yeah. other... Thank you, God. On here tonight, you have had some of these feelings. And during these 24 months, 22 months, I have a many, there have been a lot of these feelings during this uh, COVID, during this pandemic. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Uh, and that last one, you feel life has no purpose. Uh, want of purpose or lack of purpose can affect all aspects of your life. Not, yes, Elder Thomas. Okay. The lack of purpose can affect all aspects of your life and can cause you to uh, uh, ruminate on anxious thoughts that cause you distress. Hear me. Satan preys upon our weaknesses and devises the most elaborate and intricate methods at his disposal to bait us into thinking that we are worthless and life has no meaning. When you don't feel you have purpose, you may feel unfulfilled in your relationships with others, uh, uh, disaffected at home and at work, uh, find yourself anxiously ruminating on what the what, what what the point of life is, what's the use? You may feel desperate or simply numb. Um, all of this happens in this futility and unable to find enjoyment in the things that used to bring you pleasure. Oh my God, it can contribute to depression and anxiety, especially when you feel unable to see a way out of your empty feelings. It can also isolate you from your friends. Uh, you shut in, you retreat, you turn away from everyone. You go away from your loved ones, leaving you feeling lonely and cut off. And you'll begin to feel like they cut you off when you really cut yourself off. Unable to participate in social activities and inadequate. A lot of times we do that, and then and 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 it happens in in local churches. Uh, people will say, "Well, nobody has called me, no one has reached out to me." But really, you shut yourself off, and so all of this happens as signs of futility. And when life has no purpose, after this series, I am going to teach on how to know your purpose in God. Uh, we have one more week and after next week, I'm going to do uh, maybe a three or four week on how to know your purpose in God. Some people still searching. They don't know why they're here on earth. What am I here for? Get up in the morning, do the same routine, but what on earth are you here for? So I'm going to be teaching a few weeks on uh, 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 your living purpose, because this is what happens when you feel uh, life has no purpose. All of these bullets here, you can go back through them. 
my, my, my. And a lot of these bullets come because, and not only with uh, out that this happens, even within families, we uh, uh, make each other feel this way. And so God is speaking to us to help us, to let us know everything is meaningless, completely meaningless. What do people get for all their hard work under the sun? Generations come, generations go, but the earth never changes. The sun rises and the sun sets, then hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and then turns north. Around and around it goes, blowing in circles. Rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. My goodness. Then, then the water returns again to the rivers and flows out again to the sea. Everything is wearisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. This is what God is saying tonight when we talk about this feeling useless. Look at Roman number five. Biblical persons who experience futility. Our fear of inadequacy often prevents us from doing the things we feel God called uh, us to do because we, uh, 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 won't, uh, uh, we don't want to fail. We will fred because we don't want to fail. Our feelings of inadequacy can affect us in an area, uh, in any areas of our lives. But we want to see what does the Bible say about inadequacies? Who in the Bible felt inadequate? And, and, and it may surprise you to learn that several Bible hero, heroes also uh, felt inadequate. We're only going to mention a two tonight, but there are several I could have listed. Uh, uh, I didn't even list Paul. With Paul, with all of his credentials, he felt inadequate. Uh, Gideon, uh, with all he had conquered, but he started feeling inadequate because I come from a small family. Jabez's name not mentioned. Then you have Elijah. Look at Elijah, all the things he had done. All the accomplishments Elijah made in the book of Kings. And then here it is at the end, he felt useless and inadequate and wanted to run and hide and go under a juniper tree and die. My, but let's look at these two tonight, two that you're familiar about. Uh, uh, when we think about Moses, we think about the man who went up to Pharaoh we all learned this as a little child, the story of Pharaoh and demanded that he let God's people go. And we think of the man, uh, 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 Moses, who led the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness and exhibited great faithfulness. We think about the man who was called a friend of God. But before Moses became that man, he wrestled with his feelings of inadequacy. Before he became those things I just said, Moses felt useless. And in the book of Exodus chapter three, we read of Moses's encounter with God at the burning bush. God spoke to him out of the bush that burned but was not consumed. And so after years of spending most of his time around sheep, behind the mountain, he didn't feel worthy. He felt inadequate, but God had a plan. Oh my God, to deliver his people. His plan was for Moses to do it. And so the question would, how would Moses respond to God's call? Somebody tonight, God wants to use you to do something and you've got to Think about how you will respond when you recognize what God wants you to do. So here, he immediately began to make excuses. Uh, and, and Moses began to list all the reasons he can't do uh, what God wants him to do. My, my, my. Look at, look at Moses. Uh, someone read a couple of those, please. Under number five, on the bottom of your front sheet. Yes, Pastor, I'll try and uh, I'll read it. You can do it. Thank Praise you. God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Moses, number one, I am not adequate for the task. 
Sometimes I feel like that. And it says, who am I? Moses asked, Exodus 3, 11. I will be with you, Exodus 3, 12. I don't know enough. If I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is my name? What is his name? What, what should I tell them? Exodus 13, 3 says, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am, I am has sent me to you. Exodus 13. Exodus 3, 14. People won't take. Look at this is another excuse, uh, 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 Minister Johnson. Look at another excuse he made. Go ahead and read it. People won't take me seriously. I've been that way myself. Mm. What if they won't believe me and will not obey me but say, the Lord did not appear to you. You know, there's so many times that we have to take that word and just say that God's word, if I'm doing the truth, mm -hmm. God sent me. Mm -hmm. Give it back to him. Mm -hmm. Exodus 4, 1. They, li they listen to what you say. Exodus 3, 18. I'm not good with words, another excuse. Please, Lord, I have been, I have never been eloquent, my excuse. Mm. I will help, <clears throat> I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. My God. Exodus 4, 11 through 12. And then the, the last one, says, I am not willing. Please, Lord, send someone else. Moses said, Exodus 4, 13. And, you know, this whole picture sums up my life in a lot of ways. And we're in feeling how other people thought how, you know, what mm -hmm. they felt about the way I'm doing things. I don't understand you. Well, I might not have the big eloquent words to say, but I do have something to say. And the Bible tells me to look for the truth and what I'm saying and how I'm doing it. If I'm saying the truth, mm. that's all that matters. I got to stand on God's promise. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Pastor, may I say something, please? Oh, Minister Queen, yes. yes. Minister Johnny, I have yes. to tell you this right now. I love to hear you pray. Mm -hmm. You might not have the eloquent and the big words that other people use, but your prayers are so sincere. I know God hears you, and your prayers really speak to me. I just want mm -hmm. you to know that. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And I told him those same words. Yes, you did. Uh, the other day. I told him the same words the other day. It's the resonance and the power of God in your voice when you pray. And it's all right. And there are several others. Oh, yes. And nobody can say hallelujah like you. So we, we thank God. We thank God. And, yes. and there are others on here that can identify with these excuses. But when he said, I'm not willing, and then uh, he said, please, Lord, send somebody else. This was not an excuse for Moses at this time, but it revealed the real issue about him. But every excuse Moses had made, God offered his promise and provision. And having run out of excuses, Moses revealed that the heart of the problem was a problem of the heart, his heart. In other words, Moses was saying, I don't want to do this. 
So it revealed his heart when he ran out of excuses. He was saying, I don't want to do this. And this is usually the real issue. It's usually the real issue. And we are simply not willing to step out in faith and obey God. So he ran out and he just had to say, Lord, I'm not willing. And that was the real thing uh, coming from his heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. However, we, we, we look at Moses by himself was inadequate. And just as we are too, by ourselves, the deliverance of the people didn't depend on the ability of Moses, but on the presence and the power and the sufficiency of God. That's where the deliverance came, by the presence, the power, and the sufficiency of God. So we too can feel inadequate. Uh, 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 in and of ourselves. Look at Jeremiah. Oh my goodness. Look at Jeremiah. Go ahead, somebody, and read that. Uh, look at it. When, when God called Jeremiah to be a prophet to his people, he said these words. Look at the words he said. Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I adorn thee a prophet unto the nations. Yes. Ah, Lord God, I behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. My God, thank you. Today, we like to believe that if God called us and have us a personal assignment, we'd respond with joy and complete submission. But the truth is, We'd probably respond more like Jeremiah, uh huh, uh, uh, saying that, oh Lord, but I cannot speak. I'm just a child. And we often call Jeremiah the weeping prophet because many times through his ministry, he wept, he cried. And not only that, but he also had a message that seemed uh, gloomy. It wasn't one of those where, you know, the people like to shout off the pews. Uh, his messages seemed gloomy to a people who believed they would always possess the promised land. But when he had first been called and several times throughout his ministry, Jeremiah felt useless. He felt useless. And God had given him a huge task. He was to tell his people that if they did not repent, they, people don't like for you to preach about repentance and holiness. And that's what he had to do. He had to preach about repentance. He said he was to tell his God's people that if they did not repent, they will be taken into slavery. And this message was not one that anyone in Israel wanted to hear. They didn't want to hear that. Uh, 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 but the question is, what if Jeremiah had given in to his fear of inadequacy? Uh-huh. I'm sure God would have appointed someone else to deliver the word, but that person wouldn't have been Jeremiah. So the point I'm making is that our fear of inadequacy can prevent us from doing uh, uh, good, ordained, uh, God-ordained things. There can be good, God-ordained things, and that fear of inadequacy can prevent us from that. And depending on the thing, sometimes God will appoint someone else to do the work, but that person won't be us. It won't be us. God wants to use you. And so God is saying to us, when we look at Jeremiah, you have important work to do. Somebody hear me loud and clear. We say, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm saying this loud and I'm proud. You have important work to do. Somebody hear me tonight. And you can't allow your fear of inadequacy to stop you from doing that work. You've been called to do that. And, 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 and someone may ask the question, what other excuses uh, uh, do we make when God calls? We hear what Moses said. We hear what Jeremiah said. Also, uh, uh, another excuse uh, that people can use, uh, one might uh, be, I'm too old. Because see, Moses was 80 years old. Moses was 80 years old. Or another might say, uh, like Jeremiah, I'm only a you. But whatever the excuse, it often boils down to the lack of trust and an unwillingness to obey God. You really want to say what Moses said at the end. 
I'm not willing. God has a plan. Hear me, everybody. God has a plan for carrying out his rescue mission in the world. Guess what? We're it. We're it. We're it. We're his rescue mission plan. No excuses. So God is saying he's prepping us. He's prepping us. He's getting us ready. And he's calling us to do great things. Amen? Amen. I can't hear you talking to your mic, baby. Can I tell something that happened to me? It was um, when we had to do our uh, sermon. And um, so it was uh, it was video. And so I had a recording of it. So one day I was sitting down and I was and I put it in the CD to, to watch it. And when I did, I, I realized how close, I had never realized how close I had to get to a book or anything to read it, to read it. And when I saw that, I became very much afraid and I, I really became an expert and I said, I, I just can't, I won't read anymore in public because I saw how close I had to put that book to read out. And all my years, I had never realized how close I had to put a book to read it. And so, and I was getting ready to do a sermon that, for that, uh, coming up for a Wednesday night, you know, midweek service. Mm -hmm. And I felt so very inadequate at that point that I wanted to call you and say, Pastor, I just cannot do this anymore. That's how inadequate I felt about that. Yeah. But guess what? God said to me, <laughs> do you remember when you lost your vision and you couldn't read at all. Mm. And I mm. and I thought about it and I said, yeah, I said, Lord, I do remember. He said, then because you've been blessed and you wanted to read so much and you were so excited about being able to read, you <laughs> tell that devil, get the moving, because you're doing that message that Wednesday night. And that God. got me through it. My God. And guess what? When you flip on the front side of your sheet, what happened that night, what happened when you had to preach, you cut the T off of can't and it turned into I can. I can. Yes. You cut the T off of can't and it turned into I can. Yes. I yes. Yes. I was embarrassed when I, when I saw it, when I saw the, 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 the video, mm -hmm. I, I, all kind of emotions came in my head. Mm -hmm. And I, I just said, I was like, oh, oh my God, what do people think? You know, what do people say? And all these things that you're talking about tonight, those things went through my mind. Yeah. And only God could to bring me through it when he said, do you remember mm -hmm. when you had no vision and you could not read at all for yourself? Yes. Wow. But we are really studying about champion living. And every one of these lessons, we can find ourselves in them. And God is speaking to us in these lessons. Go back and yes. go over each handout. Yes, Elder Thomas. I just need a handout. But I was just, amen. Okay. Dream. You don't have your handout. Okay. Uh, I'll, well, okay. I'll uh, make sure I text uh, Victor and ask him to download it for you. Okay, thank you. I sure will. Yes. I really needed this lesson. <laughs> oh, yes, dear. And I wish you had your hand out in front of you. I'm so sorry. Yes. That's okay. Okay. Uh, how do you handle feelings of futility? Here we go now. In most cases, our feelings of inadequacy have little to do with fact and everything to do with feeling. Yes, Seth. So how do we deal with inadequacy? How do we deal with it when we feel useless? How do we uh, 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 stamp down, uh, tamp down our fear of uh, inadequacy and not let it prevent us from what God has called us to do? It's not easy, but I'm giving you two things you can do to keep your fear of inadequacy under control. Someone read those two for me, please, under Roman number six. How do you handle feelings of you uh, uh, futility? 
if you have your hand out. Number one, remember, remember that. Okay, go ahead, Sister Paulette. Yes. Remember that we're all inadequate. Hold it right there. Remember that we are all inadequate. Think about it for a second, everybody. Think about it for a second. Everyone has felt that they were inadequate for one thing or another. Yet some persons pushed through and others didn't. Minister D pushed through. And if you can remember that inadequacy is not unique to you, then you can push through the fear of inadequacy and do what needs to be done. Yes, remember that we are all inadequate. Number two, remember who has called you to the task you now feel inadequate to accomplish. Ooh, remember who called you. It wasn't this world. It wasn't the standards of this world. It's not by the criteria that the world gives. When God appoints you to do a task, he equips you to complete it. Uh, uh, just look at uh, uh, the two Bible characters we just discussed. Every excuse Moses presented as a reason he could not accomplish the task, God provided a solution. <laughs> God, he said, I can't talk. He said, send Aaron. God, God gave him every solution. When Jeremiah gave the reasons for he felt inadequate, God responded with a solution. And so we find with both of them, God had the final word. They could do as he had asked because he would be with them. He kept telling Moses, I'm with you. I'll be with you. Uh, uh, yes, Elder Thomas. I didn't say anything that time there. Okay. All right. Uh, so, that's okay. That's okay. You're on with us though. And uh, so we see uh, uh, these feelings. Number seven, tips on overcoming. Now, this is what we want. Tips for overcoming. And remember, we started 10 minutes late tonight because of constant contact. And thanks to Elder Valencia for announcing it for me. Uh, this is the first time in all the years that I've uh, use them, that they delayed us like that, that our handout got stuck up and did not deliver. But uh, we just, we were delayed 10 minutes for you. You were supposed to get your handout 6.15 and you didn't get it until time for us to start. But, uh, uh, and for those of you who didn't get it, please go back and pull it. Uh, tips, if you're at this point in your life, you know how unhealthy it is for you and others around you. So we need to know what we can do about it. And so I'm giving you a few tips that many use to deal with futility that will help. Uh, now, let me just say this. They're not an automatic cure. These tips are not an automatic cure. It takes you some time. It took you some time to get in this way. And it also would take some time for change to come. So uh, do not expect an overnight change. Let someone start reading the tips, please. Tip number one, instead of focusing on how bad the opposition is, focus on how amazing your allies are. Think about how much love, effort, and beauty your allies are putting into the work alongside you. My God. Don't, don't, don't if you think about the uh, ignorance of people who don't seem to care. Don't even think, just think about the love uh, with those, your allies. Go on. Refu Number two, refuse negative influences. Mm. 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 I fear you, that stop. Wait, wait, right there. Mm -hmm. You all have to do this. You all know the old saying, mm -hmm. everybody loves company. Yes. And it's true. Yeah. When people are miser miserable, they want to try to make you miserable. There are people out there who are in a similar or worse circumstance than you, and they will do everything they can to keep you down. Satan wants nothing more than to keep you in your present state because it keeps you uh, 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 from effectively living the champion life that God wants you to uh, 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 live. Paul was writing to the Corinthians Oh, uh, my God. Look at what Paul was writing. Read that, uh, Minister Queen. Paul says, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. My Lord. 
his fears is that these Christians would be led away from their pure and simple devotion to God. And, and that is exactly what happens when we allow uh, ourselves to be pulled into or keep us in some state of uselessness or fertility, we lose that pure and simple devotion we once had. We lose that uh, connection we once had. And the wisdom we need is that Proverbs 25, 19. Putting, your, putting confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth or <laughs> walking on a lame foot. Oh my goodness. Read that again. <laughs> putting confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth or walking on a lame foot. Be careful who you rely upon. Mm -hmm. It could be a broken tooth, which will hurt, or walking on a lame foot, and that will hurt. Mm -hmm. Just go on and read. Um, I, there's so much in me, but I, I don't want to stop you with these tips. Go on and read. Tips three. Tip number three. Realize how lucky you are to be in the position to try at all. Be grateful that you can, that you get to put at least some effort into what is important to you. Number four, realize that anger and fear will burn you out. If you contact the love and compassion for those you originally hoped to help, you will be sustained. My God. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Number five, <clears throat> remember your purpose. <clears throat> let me pause, let me pause right let here. <laughs> let, let me pause right here because we go, I'm going to teach on purpose. Uh, if you're suffering from uselessness, you need to realize that your spiritual house is on fire and you better do something about it before everything crashes in. This is what you've got to remember your purpose. It is time to remind yourself day after day, moment after moment, that you are not here on this earth just for yourself but you have been called to a higher purpose, one that brings glory to almighty God. That's mm. what it's all about. Go ahead. First Corinthians 9 verses 24 and 26 says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I run with purpose in every step. You've got to do it moment by moment, day by day, not in and out, up and down. And you will know your purpose here on earth is not just for you, but it is to bring glory to almighty God, my, mm. my Lord. Tip number six, take care of yourself. Treat yourself like a well-valued agent of change that needs to be taken care of in order to function optimally. Mm. Take care of yourself. Yes. Mm. Engage in spiritual practice, rest, have fun, laugh, uh, 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 all of those things to take care of yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> Number seven, count our blessings. One way to believe we can move forward is to realize how far we've come. And number eight, rest in God's peace. John 14, 27 says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. These are tips that will help you overcome. When it says rest in God's peace, God, want, God wants more than anything for you to put away the feelings of this uselessness, not being needed and realize that he loves you no matter uh, uh, what. Mm -hmm. uh, God, God uh, uh, isn't grading you on how much money you make. Hear me. He's not grading you on how much money you make. He's not grading you on where you live, 
what family you're in, how long your pedigree is, or how many accomplishments you have to your credit. He's not grading you on that. He's not comparing Amen. you to your anybody's. Isn't it time for us just to relax and let, we sing the song, let go and let God. Well, let go and let God. Relax and let God do his work in you. God loves you just as you are. Just as I am without one plea. God loves you just as you are. Amen. Amen. And you've got to know this John 14, 27 is a promise, is a promise, is a promise. And you need to claim that promise today and every day. Read that promise again. John 14, 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Amen. Ecclesiastes carries the theme of futility throughout its 12 chapters. Oh, and I love the very last verse. Oh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. All of this here that we've read in all 12 chapters. The futility Solomon speaks of conveys a sentiment of emptiness or without meaning. We all know uh, chapter three. For everything, there's a season. Oh, my goodness. But but the, it, it conveys a sentiment of, of emptiness or without meaning. In other words, we desire only to fill our cravings with the objects of our desires, but realize quickly that the end result leaves us void of feeling fulfilled at all. Going back to Tom Landry, when the Cowboys won the Super Bowl, and if you're feeling this way, let me tell you what else you can do. There they are, those bullets you can do. Now, these bullets here, this is the practical part. I've been dealing with the spiritual part, but let me tell you what else you can do to help you deal with this. But after you have done all of these things you desire and you get to the end of whatever, it leaves us void of feeling fulfilled at all. We've been there. Oh my goodness. But there, there, here are the other things we can do. Let me tell you, talk to a trusted family member, friend or colleague about how you feel. Someone else read these bullets for me, please. Yeah, these are the practical things you can do. Can we get a reading? Talk to a trusted friend, family member, colleague about how you feel. If you think you are in immediate danger of harming yourself, contact the emergency service or a crisis line or go there directly. Talk to a professional such as a doctor, mental health professional, counselor, or social worker. If you practice a religion, talk to someone from your religious community who, who you trust. Join a self-help or support group for people who live experience of self-harm. You can help each other to feel better. Yes, you all. Let us hear, if you know of anyone, if you feel in any kind of way, talk, please, talk, please. We know the recent with our uh, Miss America. I mean, who would uh, just jump off the 67 stories up? Uh, I know many. Uh, and let me tell you, wealth will not satisfy you. Mr. Uh, Reed, who owned the Reed drug stores, I mean, had the rich, wealthy, billionaire, but he opened the window and jumped out of the hospital window and committed suicide. So we have to know that anything separate from God, it will not bring fulfillment. So in this conclusion of our lesson, God blessed Solomon with the gift of wisdom and prospered uh, more than any man in history. And, and, and in his arrogance, he felt he could test the limits of self-fulfillment because he had 
uh, the modest touch <laughs> and everything he touched would figuratively turn to gold. But he misunderstood the Lord's provision as an opportunity to live independent of God while he pursued his passions, the word passions. And as we walk through difficult times, it's easy to take our eyes off Jesus. It's easy to take our eyes off Jesus. And as soon as we do so, there's an instant pull toward hopelessness. You begin to feel hopeless as soon as you take your eyes off of him. It's in our darkest moments that we need to be focused on God's faithful and generous uh, 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 character. Our lives are being, every day, every day our lives are being watched by those who don't know Jesus. And, and how we respond to trials reveals so much about where our hope and trust truly lies. People are watching to see how we handle things. Oh my God. And as we always say, you may be the only sermon that somebody can see. And when we endure adversity by displaying our confidence in him, we inspire faith in those around us. So we, we, we have to be careful that we uh, uh, not take our eyes off of him. And when you find yourself doing that, immediately go to the scriptures, immediately go to a friend or someone. Uh, we, can, we also can make uh, that claim that our good enough comes from God. Remember that, that claim, our good enough comes from God. You need to tell yourself all the time, my good enough comes from God. It doesn't matter what we uh, don't have according to earthly standards. The Bible in Colossians, uh, 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 I don't know if I gave this to you, but write it down. Uh, uh, in Colossians 2.10, it tells us we are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. It's not about what you don't have to the earthly standards. We are complete in Christ. And so as Solomon discovered, the, uh, the mirage of contentment, our world tempts us with will fade and pass away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Is that what he tells us? Man is as grass. One generation passes away, another generation coming, but the earth abided forever. So it's like grass. My challenge to you, and here's a challenge at the bottom. In what areas of your life do you feel inadequate? You think about it, get along with God. Find one Bible verse to remind yourself that you are enough in Christ and keep that verse to yourself. Keep it to yourself, keep it to yourself. But do take that time, uh, maybe before you say your prayers tonight or maybe wherever you are, maybe when we uh, close the prayer tonight, maybe when we get off Bible study, in what areas of your life do you feel inadequate? Come on now. It's between you and God. And when you do, ask God to give you a verse to remind yourself that you are enough in him. And that Colossians 2.10 I gave you, read the full verse, but it tells you that you are complete in Christ. You are enough in Christ. Amen. I hope you can begin uh, having victory over feelings of inadequacy. Uh, it isn't, uh, uh, as I said earlier, going to happen overnight. But if you follow these tips, uh, it will help have, uh, uh, happen. And, and you can praise God for it. Uh, let us remember that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Second Peter chapter one, verses three, and four. Let us go to God in prayer. Before we pray, are there any announcements, anything we want to share 
with the uh, faith body, anything, any concerns that we want to share. We do invite everyone to Sunday school. Remember we're in combined Sunday school and we want to encourage all ages to come to our Sunday school until we make adjustments. Uh, our superintendent is working on that. Uh, so please, uh, are there any other announcements from any ministries, any persons? Uh, I do want to thank God uh, for our elders outreach uh, uh, initiative outreach on Saturday. It was a blessing. Go to Love Life on Facebook and you will see uh, the uh, Stop in the Name of Love outreach. Beautiful, beautiful. I just didn't get my Valentine bag because I couldn't make it there in time. I had an appointment, but it was a beautiful, beautiful outreach. People are talking about it. I got two or three calls about it from people I haven't seen in a few years. So there are things you can do even in this time. Things are coming. Pay attention to the announcements. I know some people may come on after the announcements are given on Sunday morning. We may need to run them during the week, uh, but uh, let us uh, try to capture uh, what we can with the announcements. Okay. Hi, Pastor. Yes. I would like to give a special uh, announcement to tell everybody to look out for the women's um, announcement that you yes. do this Sunday. We're super excited about our theme for 2022. It's standing on the promises of hope by being intentional. Mm -hmm. So ladies, please um, look for the announcement. We have great things coming your way. We're super excited. And thanks to the team. Beautiful, beautiful announcement. I got happy when I saw it. Uh, just beautiful, being intentional. And it's going to be a blessing. And also uh, watch for the announcements because the ushers will be at the church. Uh, I believe it was March 9th, I believe. But watch for the ushers will be there to give out palms for Palm Sunday. Uh, so we want you to drive through, drive by, pick up your palms so that you can have them in your virtual space. And uh, we can wave them in victory in wherever we are worshiping God. Amen. Let us pray for Brother Lee Pride in the home going of his father on Saturday. Uh, the service, uh, you can see the uh, information about the visitation and the uh, uh, service for Saturday. Uh, so let us pray for him and his family. Okay. Uh, I believe that's it. Any other announcement? If not, we're, uh, all right, let's go. Let's end. Uh, Minister Johnny. Yes, I'm here, Pastor. Okay, would you close us out in prayer? I love all of you all. Stay safe, and Minister Johnny is going to pray us out. So good to see all of you tonight. Yes, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and praise, oh God for this opportunity to come to the table of bread and to share the word of, of thy holy word with each and every one of us. Lord God, as we go forth this day, let us take the word and write them upon the tables of our hearts mm -hmm. that we may not sin against you, mm -hmm. but keep our man stayed steadfast on thee and the love of thy son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. 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 God bless you. Good night. Good night. Praise God. Amen. Good night. Good night. Emmanuel. Good night. Emmanuel. Good night, Emmanuel.